Okay, in this section of the video, what I'm going to be doing, let me get it so you can see, what I'm going to be doing today is in the last video, I roughed out my background layer and I left a little bit here. Uh, just so I'm going to show you, I'm going to take that out. And now I'm going to uh, work out here my middle ground. I'm going to remove that and rough that out. My intention is for this tile is I'm going to have a diagonal texture for the background. I'm going to have a um, competing texture for the middle ground. And then I'm going to be sculpting the pelican and rounding him out and finishing the foreground. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to finish taking this out. And I again, you can use an X-Acto knife or an arrowhead tool. And here's the X-Acto knife, essentially similar tools. So, and I can show you how to use this scoop. A lot of you that got tools, I can come here like this and just remove this material. It might not be at the same level that when we used our wire loop tool, but I can shave that down and get to that background level. Okay. So I tried to get your levels determined before you start working on all the detail, okay? So, and I'll also be cleaning this lineup. I'll be using a ruler and that X-Acto knife and cleaning this up. So what I want to do now is remove the down to the middle ground layer. I'll use the X-Acto knife. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to free this up this material against where my pelican is. And I might be going a little bit deeper, maybe all the way down to where my um, background level is, but I'm not gonna be carving all of that way. So. And this detail I will, if I need to, I will be able to add some clay. Maybe you make an accident, you have an accident and you uh, carve away material. You can, if necessary, add material back. So clay is pretty forgiving compared to wood. So I'm just gonna continue this. Again, artistic license. You know, you can leave material there and remove it later. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to want to do these edges. So, I want to protect my border so I don't cut into it. So, put your ruler on the border. And I've already made this cut, but I'm going to make another one. Yeah. Okay. So here's my border on this side, and I'm going to make this cut through the whole length and really clean this up now. Make sure I'm there. And again, if you have a metal ruler, you know, check to make sure it's not warped or bent. If you have a wood ruler, wood uh, changes with moisture so make sure that your ruler isn't warped that's going to be really important okay, so I just cleaned I just cut that all the way to my background level and let me do this one again I'm using the lazy Susan that's making it easy for me to spin this around Side here. And I'll clean this cut all the way up. Just make sure you're maintaining contact with your straight edge, whatever it is. Okay, my pelican beak is going to be breaking this plane into the middle ground. So when I carved my um, background, I put tape right there and then I was trimming right to that edge. 
Now I'm going to go a little bit less than that. And this is kind of big, but I'm going to use it in some of the areas. So let's see here. off. Taking the old tape off. And I'm going to put a new tape. And that's just going to be my gauge. So let me show you. I just made it less. So let's see. Move it up a little bit more. There we go. So I'm just going to remove big swaths of material right now at that level. Oh. The thing is, is to keep it, keep the tool level. Uh, my clay is firmed up a little bit. Oh, it's a little bit of struggle pushing the material or the tool through the material. And I also have this little one here for tight areas. That's a quarter of an inch in width. So I can use this one. And just pay attention to your thickness. It doesn't have to be exactly level. It can be, and it doesn't have to be, your background and your middle ground doesn't have to be that much of a space difference either, but it definitely a different level. All right. And just start working your way through the material. I think starting on one side and this, after um, I get done removing it all, don't worry about these edges. I'll be able to plane and smooth this out. Again, your middle ground level might be a series of mountains or something, or if you're doing a beach scene, waves, or maybe you got an image of um, being in a dune buggy, those could be sand dunes, you know? Whatever the image is you're choosing. But we're just roughing it out right now. So I'm gonna try and go quick. Each one of these videos, I don't wanna be too long. But I want you to get the concept and go from there. This edge here, I made cuts all around so it's going to be easy for the material to be removed. And again, I'm holding my finger like this and bracing so I'm able to control the pressure of the tool on the material using my pinky as a balancing point. These you might be able to even use um, in your design if you were going to add material. So that'd be another option. Right. 
So the first part is just getting your design fleshed out and then there's gonna be quite a bit of time on the detail and cleaning. And this is what I mean rough, you know. Uh, we want, if this was an intentional texture, I would have consistency all over the place. You're just, you know, carving this out and leaving it like that without it relating to your design uh, is not what we're looking for. So I'll be spending time in smoothing all of that out. Just getting most of the material removed and to do that next part. And here's a bear, I can rely back on this for the big areas. Smoothing. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, uh, keeping your tool clean is going to make it easy for you to um, remove the material. So, on your wire loop tools, just keep the clay out of off the metal and it'll be a lot easier to plane and smooth the surface of the clay. Okay. So now I got some cleaning up to do. I'm gonna add texture to each one of these levels. This is the middle ground I'm carving down to. I'm gonna add texture to it, but first I wanna get it smooth and even consistency, and then I can come back and add the texture. So again, uh, the way this tool works, the steeper it is on the surface, it gouges. The more I lay it parallel to the surface, I have more control in removing the material. So if I hold it at a 90 degrees perpendicular, I can gouge. Laying it l more level with the plane of the material, and I take less off and I have more control. So what I'm going to do now is just continue to smooth this out. And my goal here is uh, get this clean, get that clean. And then lastly, I'm gonna be putting the detail on the pelican and actually giving the illusion that it's rounded out and protruding above this plane here, which is our border. Okay, so. Again, you can see having that Lazy Susan, the ability to rotate your work quickly and actually use it while you're carving is a great benefit and a small investment. Uh, I think it's under $5 for that Lazy Susan. It's the same equipment we use when we're in the studio. So I'm going to uh, stop now and let you guys get back to work. In the next video, I will have this cleaned up. I'll have this cleaned up. And I'm going to start to... Uh, work on the pelican okay so that's working on the middle ground and we'll move on okay guys see you in the next video